Hello everyone, and welcome to the 2017 post-National Train Day update video where I will show you all of the train related things that I got for my birthday and for National Train Day. As always, I do this because my birthday and National Train Day are not too far apart from each other. So I combine the two in this video like I do every year. So, the first thing that we're looking at that is train related that I got for my birthday is this New Haven Railroad hat by Daylight Sales. And also with the hat I also got the catalog, the latest version of their catalog. And this company, they've got so much stuff. I'm just going to flip through the book really fast here to give you a brief glimpse of what they've got. They've got so much railroad apparel that I believe it's safe to say you can literally get your favorite railroad. They, they literally have something for everyone in here. Your favorite railroad is most likely in here that they have in the form of a hat or a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or even a blanket. It's, they've got so much railroad apparel here from railroads all across North America. It, it's absolutely uh, incredible. And so I have a new New Haven Railroad hat here, which I got for my birthday with the Serif NH logo. And I believe what they were trying to do is they were trying to imitate the NH logo that used to be on the EP5 electrics that the New Haven Railroad had. They're all scrapped now, unfortunately. But they used to have, on most of them, or all of them, they had the NH logo look somewhat like this, with a white N and a burnt orange H. Now, I guess the burnt orange color is kind of difficult to replicate here, because in certain light, it kind of looks like it's red, and in other shades of light, it looks like it's orange. So sometimes it fluctuates between orange and red. So it might have been a bit difficult for them to get the color right for the H, but they certainly got it right for the N, though. And still, this is still a great hat, and I really like it. The Daylight Sales, they've got lots of great railroad apparel here, so if you're trying to update and add more to your wardrobe for train related clothing then you should seriously consider daylight sales these guys have got a huge amount of stuff here great variety of clothing that suits your railroad needs so the second thing we're looking at here that i got for my birthday for 2017 that was train related is this this t-shirt right here it's a hellgate bridge Centennial t-shirt 2017 is the centennial year for the Hellgate Bridge in New York City and uh, This is a this is a nice shirt uh, and uh, the front of it's actually probably the more boring side the more exciting part of it's actually on the back I'll show you uh, right now uh, Well, it is a nice shirt. I will say it's a little big on me. Maybe if I had one size smaller of this shirt it would be great it probably would be a better fit by the way this shirt is made by a company called long island railroad customs and that company makes railroad apparel that's specific for like the northeastern united states so things that are um, long island railroad related or pennsylvania railroad related new haven railroad related uh, and so on uh, you'll see stuff from those railroads most likely that they make for railroad apparel. Again, a great t-shirt. I um, kind of wish I had a slightly smaller version of it, but uh, th but this will do for now at least. And uh, this shirt was made in a very limited supply. I wish it was reissued uh, because I would definitely uh, get another one of these uh, Hellgate Bridge shirts. But for now, this one will do. It's a keeper. So I'm glad that I have that. So uh, yeah, uh, now that I mentioned and showed you the these two things, for that I got for my birthday that was uh, train related I will show you the next part of the video which I'll show you even more stuff that was train related which is the train simulator 2017 DLC that I got for my birthday for 2017 so we'll take a look at that right now okay so now we're looking at the first DLC that I got for my birthday for train simulator 2017 this is the North Jersey Coast and Morristown lines route by Dovetail Games. This includes the North Jersey Coast Line and the Morristown Line 
from both New York's Penn Station and Hoboken Terminal to Bayhead, New Jersey for the North Jersey coastline and to Dover, New Jersey for the Morristown line. There's also a New Jersey Transit ALP45 DP dual mode diesel electric locomotives, crew and non crew versions of them. There's also New Jersey Transit Comet 5 cab cars, crew and non crew versions. New Jersey Transit Comet 4 cab cars, crew and non crew versions. New Jersey Transit Comet 4 coaches, static and rolling stock versions. New Jersey Transit ALP46 electric locomotives, crew and non crew versions. New Jersey Transit multi level cab cars, crew and non crew versions. New Jersey Transit multi level coaches, yellow container flat cars, Union Pacific automobile cars, 10 scenarios which are 7 career mode and 3 rail fan mode, and there are several new scenery objects and assets as well as many more recycled from previous Dovetail Games routes. Now, since I already reviewed the standalone version of the North Jersey coastline back in January of 2016. I'm going to focus this part of the review for the North Jersey Coast and Morristown lines specifically on the core of the Morristown line, specifically from Kearney to Dover, New Jersey. I'm going to specify this part of the review on that as well as on the Comet 4 cab cars and I will also talk about the multi-levels, since the multi-levels were not introduced to the North Jersey coastline originally back in January of 2016. It wasn't until a couple months later that they were finally introduced to the standalone North Jersey coastline. So I will be reviewing them in this part of the review as well. And I'll also review the ALP-46 since that locomotive was not included in the standalone version of the North Jersey coastline. So now, with all that said, we move on to the pros, advantages, and strengths of this DLC. The rails are T-rail, just like in real life, and the ties are rendered for the wooden tie sections. The cab cars have working marker lights that turn on and off on the last car when the locomotive's headlights are turned on. The alerter works on the included locomotives and cab cars. There are multiple signal systems on the route, including ex-Pennsylvania Railroad style signals, three-light block signals, and target type signals. There are working in-cab speed limits and overspeed penalties on the included locomotives and cab cars. The locomotives and multi-level cab cars have working computer screens for some, but not all, information. Most of the controls on the locomotives and cab cars animate, and they animate properly. The included locomotives and cab cars have improved, but not the most realistic braking physics ever made for Dovetail Games' train simulator. There is a passenger car interior view for the multi-level cab cars. There are smooth curves and super elevated curves included. The included locomotives have the TSX features such as headlights that cast light on the surrounding environment and rain on the windows whenever it rains or snows. The multi-level cab car's interior view also has rain on the windows whenever it rains or snows. Station pedestrians are properly dressed for all seasons and they have the latest animations such as drinking coffee and checking their cell phones. All the locomotives and cars have customizable numbers. The light rail tracks are included in Newark but they're only for show. They don't go very far in the game. The included locomotives and cab cars have notched throttles. There are traffic trains in quick drive scenarios. Achievements are included. Occlusion is included for tunnels, New York's Penn Station, and when going under bridges. The windows can be opened and closed on the included locomotives and cab cars, and the sounds become less muffled when opened while inside the cab. The passenger cars have customizable destination boards. The headlights are dimmable on the cab cars, and most of the Morristown line has the ex-Lackawanna Railroad style catenary poles, while the ex-Pennsylvania Railroad section of the route that was electrified during the Pennsylvania Railroad days has the ex-Pennsylvania Railroad style catenary poles, which are thin in appearance and are in a rusty bare metal color. Now we move on to the cons, goofs, and nitpicks of this DLC. The ties for the concrete tie textures are not 3D. They're flat and painted onto the ballast. The entire Morristown line has concrete ties, when in real life, parts of it have wooden ties. The headlights aren't dimmable on the included locomotives. The horn sound on the cab cars is the same as the horn that's used on the cab cars included with the surf line, and the horn sound on the locomotives is the same as the Amtrak ACS-64's horn sound that's included with the New York to New Haven Northeast Corridor. 
The horn sound on the ALP-46 constantly B sharps or flanges when it passes by the camera in an external view. The air hoses are always disconnected between all the locomotives and cars. The marker lights can't be turned on at all on the Comet 4 cab cars. The alerter is always mute in the multi-level cab cars. None of the included trains kick up snow when set in the winter. Some of the scenery objects float in the air at the Brick Church station and it's impossible to lower them in the world editor since they were added to the core model of the station and not as separate clutter scenery objects in the world editor. The doors on the passenger cars only open at high level platform positions and not low level platform positions when there's a mixture of high level and low level platforms on this route. There's no modern freight diesel included to pull the included freight cars. There are no highly urban sound effects included on this route despite the fact that major cities are featured in it. All of the scenarios take place on the Morristown line and they do not take place on the North Jersey Coast line. So they only take place between New York, Hoboken, and Dover. So this means that none of the scenarios from the original North Jersey Coast line standalone route have been re-included. The part of the route from the Kearney connection to the S-curve east of Newark's Broad Street Station has many Pennsylvania Railroad style catenary poles instead of the Lackawanna Railroad catenary poles that exist there in the real world. The Morristown line out of Hoboken is part of the former Lackawanna Railroad's main line. This problem also exists on the original North Jersey Coast Line and the New York to Philadelphia Northeast Corridor. While the full North Jersey Coast Line is included from both New York's Penn Station and Hoboken Terminal to Bayhead, featuring both the electrified and non-electrified sections, the Morristown Line only goes as far as Dover, New Jersey, where the electrification ends. When in real life, the Morristown line goes out as far west as Hackettstown, New Jersey, where it's non-electrified. Even though several services will originate and terminate in Dover in real life, it's impossible to have a scenario take place on the whole Morristown line from either New York or Hoboken to Hackettstown. It also makes the power switchover feature on the ALP45 pointless for the Morristown line, since only the electrified section of the Morristown line has been included. So that's all I have to say about this DLC. Now we'll move on to the next DLC that I got for my birthday for 2017, for Train Simulator 2017. So we'll take a look at that right now. Up next, I got the New Jersey Transit GE Aero 3 EMU cars for Train Simulator 2017. This pack includes the namesake EMU cars I just mentioned, crew and non-crew versions, as well as three scenarios for the North Jersey Coast and Morristown Lines route. Now we move on to the pros, advantages, and strengths of this DLC. These EMU cars feature the latest TSX features such as lights that light up the surrounding environment and rain on the windows whenever it rains or snows. There's a passenger car interior view and there's also rain on the windows whenever it rains or snows. Many of the sounds, such as the motor sounds and the horn sound, are prototypical to the real New Jersey Transit Aero 3 cars. The doorbell sound is also included. The combined power and direction handle will remain locked when these cars are in motion if the throttle is attempted to move to the negative position while in idle. There's a working alerter. There are working in-cab speed limits and overspeed penalties. The numbers are customizable. The headlights are dimmable. The rear marker lights light up on the last car when the lead car's headlights are turned on. The windows can be opened in the cab interior view and the sounds will become less muffled when they're open. The door to the left of the controls in the cab can be opened and achievements are included. Now we move on to the cons, goofs, and nitpicks of this DLC. There are no externally animated controls. The clickety-clack sounds sound wrong for EMU cars in general, since it sounds like there's a bunch of slack action going on. There's also no clickety-clack sounds when going over joints or switch tracks. The doorbell sound comes on when the doors open, when they should really come on when the doors close. There are no passengers inside the passenger interior view at all, even though they appear from external views. Even though the cab door can be opened from the cab interior view, it doesn't appear opened at the same amount when switching between the cab interior view and external views whenever it's opened as wide as possible. And only the married pairs of Aero 3 cars are included and not the single Aero 3 units. 
So that's all I have to say about this DLC. Now we're going to move on to the next DLC that I got for Train Simulator 2017 for my birthday. And this one is also not just a birthday gift that I received. It's also kind of like a National Train Day gift that I received as well. So we'll take a look at that right now. So now we're looking at the final Train Simulator 2017 DLC that I got for my birthday of 2017 as well as for National Train Day. This is the Central Pacific 440 American type steam locomotives by Smokebox. This includes the Central Pacific American type steam locomotives number 60 Jupiter, number 61 Storm, number 62 Whirlwind, and number 63 Leviathan in their as delivered form. Central Pacific baggage cars, Central Pacific Clarastory coaches, Central Pacific non Clarastory emigrant coaches with arched windows, Central Pacific non Clarastory emigrant coaches with square windows, Central Pacific combine coach cars, Central Pacific flat cars loaded and unloaded versions with and without side bolsters, Central Pacific adapter flat cars with a Lincoln pin coupler at one end and a knuckle coupler on the other, 1860s style track textures, wooden water towers, wood loading platforms, wood piles, wooden bridges, spare railroad ties, telegraph poles, a woman that's dressed in 1860s attire, and three scenarios that are career mode scenarios for Donner Pass. Now we move on to the pros, advantages, and strengths of this DLC. These locomotives feature the latest TSX effects, like headlights that light up the surrounding environment, as well as rain on the windows when it rains or snows. All of the cab controls are externally animated, and all the controls animate properly. There are many externally moving parts that connect to the cab controls, such as the cylinder cocks, whistle cord, bell, and brake shoes. The fire not only has flickering flames, it also changes color according to the temperature. There's also firebox glow when the firebox door is open. Steam will shoot out in a synchronized way out of the cylinder cocks, water tricocks, whistle, blowdown pipe, and safety valves whenever they are used. The smoke puffing and steam chuffing are also synchronized. The fireman, who is modeled after me, is visible inside the cab at all times even in the cab interior view. The fireman has also been made accurately to my likeness. The fireman and engineer are dressed appropriately for American train crews from the 1860s. The doors and windows can be opened in the cab and the engineer and fireman will move their arms out of the way whenever they close. The engineer and fireman have some very smooth animations where they turn their heads, move their arms, and I, the fireman, even blink. The coaches have interior views and rain can be seen on the windows when it rains or snows. There are many new camera mounting locations on this locomotive including different angles inside the cab where you can even see through my eyes in a first person point of view as the fireman and there are also many camera views placed on some hard to reach areas of the locomotive providing for some interesting shots. The whistle acts as the code for the brakeman to apply or release the handbrakes based on how many blasts are blown as it was in the real world in the 19th century before air brakes were implemented on trains. The smoke will change color based on how well or how poorly the locomotive is being fired. Sparks will also fly out of the smokestack at times. The smoke has variable density that will change based on the throttle and reverser settings. The headlight can only be turned on and off if the locomotive is stopped. This is so because it's to symbolize that the headlight needed to be lit manually since it's a kerosene headlight. Whenever the reverser and throttle are being moved, the trigger will push in and then release whenever they are no longer being used. The reverser handle will become very stiff to move if there's too much steam chest pressure since this locomotive lacks power reverse. Sometimes, if this is attempted, the reverser will slam into full forward or full backward, which could cause serious injury or even death to the engineer in real life. The throttle has a delayed reaction to the player's command, which is prototypical due to the distance between the steam dome and the steam chest. There is visible and animated wheel slip based on load, throttle settings, and reverser settings. When the sander is being used, sand will actually squirt onto the rails. 
Piston damage can occur due to too much wheel slip or when applying power in the opposite direction while the locomotive is in motion. Snow accumulates on the locomotive when set in the winter. The locomotive has accurate sounds for 19th century 440 American types, including the sounds of the bell, whistle, and steam chuffing. And the clickety-clack sounds are realistic on this locomotive and the included rolling stock that's also included with it. Now we move on to the cons, goofs, and nitpicks of this DLC. There are no passengers in the passenger cars, even with the start with empty stock option turned off. The engineer is always invisible in the cab interior view. The camera key commands are a bit awkward and take some getting used to in comparison to other locomotives in Train Simulator 2017. Unlike the Union Pacific FEF3 Northerns made by Smokebox, there's no way to get the boiler steam pressure or the fire mass to zero if the locomotive is worked too hard. For example, the boiler pressure will always be at a minimum of 77 psi or so, even if the locomotive is being worked too hard. There's no sound of wood being added to the fire. The whistle sound will go mute after holding it down for too long, even though steam will still be seen shooting out of it. After turning off the bell, the bell sound ends abruptly without any echo or fading effects. Some of the controls like the feed water heaters, the water tricocks, and the tender's handbrake wheel are fixed and not variable. This means they can only be at 100% on or 100% off and nothing in between. Snow doesn't accumulate on the rolling stock and the locomotive doesn't kick up snow when set in the winter. There's no animation for the brake system and handbrake wheels on the included rolling stock. It's only the tender that has this animation. And water isn't seen pouring out of the spout on the water tower whenever water is being added into a tender. So that's all I have to say about this DLC, and that concludes this year's post-National Train Day update video. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned, because for the next 12 months or so, I've got some exciting videos planned that I will be releasing here on my channel. So thank you very much for watching. Take care.